Hello, this is Marissa Blankenship with the Roanoke Public Libraries, and today I'm going to take a couple of minutes to show you how you can access the library edition of Ancestry.com from right at home. So what you'll want to do is go to rvl.info, which is the same website you'd use if you were trying to access our catalog, and you want to make sure that you're logged in. So in this blue section over here, it says that I'm currently logged in, but if you weren't, it'd give you the option to, and you'd click that and enter your full library card number. So it's what's on the back of your card under the barcode. And you'd enter the one, all the nines, and then the remaining digits, no spaces or anything like that. And then it will ask for your PIN. The default PIN that every card is set to is generally RVL, but it's possible you may have changed yours. If you have any, any issues accessing this portion of the website, feel free to call us or message us on Facebook and we'll help you out. Once you're logged in, you're going to want to go to this box over here that gives you a couple of different options, and you'll want to click Ancestry, log into rvl.info to access. You've already done that. You click the link, and then it gives you an option to click Ancestry Access Link. So go ahead and do that. And then it takes you directly to the library edition of Ancestry. You'll know you're there because it says Ancestry Library up in the top left. Now there's a ton you can do on Ancestry.com. We're barely going to scratch the surface of it. But I do want to take a minute just to give you a quick overview of some really useful features that you can do, or if you have a middle or high school student, they could do as well. So click this green bar about in the middle of the page that says begin searching. And then you have a couple of options from here. If you know the name and approximate location or approximate years of a certain relative, you can go ahead and type them in here. Or if you want Virginia specific information, you can scroll down the page and every so often it does this, I don't know why, but where it says explore by location and there's a map, it's supposed to show a list of states down here. So what I recommend doing if it doesn't show that list is just refreshing the page. And then here we go. So it has USA, it has a list of states. We're going to click Virginia. That's the map, I always click the map by accident. There we go. And then where it says Virginia in bold, you're going to want to click below that where it says see more about Virginia. There we go, and this will take you to a full list of all of the data collections that have information related to people who lived in Virginia specifically. So it's just a really helpful way to narrow your search before you even begin. So there's a lot you can access here. Some of these records are limited by years, so just pay attention to that. For example, marriage records, uh, there's a section for 1936 to 2014 here, and then farther down the page, there's select marriages from 1785 to 1940. So just pay attention to some of those parameters as you're searching for specific information. Uh, so there's marriage, birth, death records. You can see some draft cards, some service records, some passenger lists for immigrants. Uh, you can also go down to newspapers, publications, some school and church directories. We'll come back to that in a minute. And then there's also some various land records some reference documents, some Virginia specific stories down here. So there's really a lot you can look at. But what we're going to do for today is I'm going to volunteer my family as a sample and we're going to click view all Virginia birth, marriage and death. So that opens up the full list of resources related to birth, marriage and death records in the state of Virginia. So what we are going to do is click birth records here. And we're going to look up when my grandfather was born. I know more or less, but I'm not quite sure exactly. So I'm going to type in his name here. So I've typed in his first and last name, Carol. His last name was Chapman. And I know he was born around the year 1900. If you're not completely sure, this is a great option, this little box here, it says exact plus minus, because it'll let you pick a range of years. So if you know it was within a year or two, within a couple years, um, so that's always just a helpful option. So I'm going to do plus or minus five years just to be safe and then click search. You can also do things like location. Um, if you know any family members, you could add their spouse or child. That sort of information can help you narrow it and then click search. And then it popped up with two possible relatives. I think this is him, Carol Shaver Chapman, born in 1901 in Franklin County. Yep, that's his family. So I recognize those family names. And then you can click view record. And there are a couple things you can do from this sort of page once you click view record. So this provides some more information about my grandfather. 
it has hyperlinks to his parents. So if I wanted to start looking them up as well, I could click those. On the right here, you can click send document and this will actually email the document directly to you, which is a really great resource. But first I'm just going to click view just to see what this looks like. Yep, so there we go. So there is my grandfather's birth certificate. You can see his parents when he was born. And then you can hit save up here and you can send it to yourself, send image home, and then you would prompt, you'd be prompted to enter your email or you can save it to your computer. So that's one thing you can do on the Ancestry Library Edition. I'm going to go back a couple of tabs. Hold on one moment, please. Okay, so going back to the Virginia tab. So I'm a little bit too far. And now I'm going to show you how you can look up some yearbooks, which is a really fun activity, especially if you have kids who maybe want to see what you look like in high school. So you would go about partway down this Virginia page to where it says schools, directories, and so forth. And then you can do US school yearbooks 1900 to 1999. So we'll click that. And then again, you can search people by name. You can look for what grade they were in. You can look up the yearbook date. And then if you go down here a little bit more, it gives you a little bit more information about when these yearbooks are from. Or if you don't know exactly what you're looking for, this is a great option too on the right here, this browses collection. You can click state, Virginia. It will then give you city options. Let's scroll down to Roanoke. And then this will show you what schools and so forth are actually or potentially available. So let's see if Patrick Henry is here. Yep, there's Patrick Henry High School. And then these are the years for which a Patrick Henry High School yearbook should be available. So let's click 1985. Takes a minute to load. And there we go. We have the 1985 Patrick Henry yearbook. I'm just going to click these arrows on the right here a little bit. And it will show different pictures of events that were happening. If you keep clicking, it will eventually take you to the student pages. So that's another great way if you're just kind of curious to want to see what's there. We'll click back, takes a moment. Or if you know someone specifically you're looking for, you can always do that that way. So let's fall into my Susan Chapman. And if you're looking for Salem, Virginia, 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 just to see if anything comes up. Well, that's not her per se. But, oh, there she is. So I was looking for my mother. At first, I was mainly finding a Susan Chapman who was, went to Patrick Henry in the 90s, for example. But then I kept going and I found this Holland College yearbook image of my mother. So you click view record. Then there's a picture of my mom. I'm sure she wouldn't be thrilled that I'm showing this. And again, you can see a source citation here where it'll tell you where this yearbook came from. And then Again, you can click send document and email it to yourself. Go back to the home page, and there's a whole lot more you can do here. Um, if your child is working on family trees, you can click this section at the top here in this black bar here where it says charts and forms. And they can actually print things out like an ancestral chart, a research calendar, and a uh, family group sheet is really useful. So these are some fun ways that they can then download these and work on them at home themselves, or you can do it too. So I hope you found that helpful. This is just a real taste of what's available on Ancestry Library Edition, and we hope you enjoy your research.